Funky Friday Anatomy Quiz. Five questions, let's go. Question one, where does the ulna nerve arise from and in which compartment is it found in the arm? Question two, which muscles are found in the anterior compartment of the leg? Question three, which structures are found in the carotid sheath? Question four, what is the blood supply of the ureter? Question five, where is the bulbospongiosis found and what does it do? So the answers. Question one, the ulnar nerve is one of the terminal branches of the medial cord of the brachial plexus. It arises medial to the axillary artery and continues medial to the brachial artery, lying on top of the coracobrachialis muscle in the anterior compartment of the arm. It then passes posteriorly through the medial intermuscular septum into the posterior compartment. Here, it lies anterior to the medial head of the triceps, and then it then passes posterior to the bony medial epicondyle of the distal humerus to enter the forearm between the two heads of flexor carpi ulnaris. So the ulnar nerve is a little cheeky as it lies in both the anterior and the posterior compartments of the arm. Question two. The muscles found in the anterior compartment of the leg include tibialis anterior, extensor digitorum longus, extensor hallucis longus, and fibularis tertius, which is a small, slender muscle that is unique to humans. Question three. The carotid sheath is found in the neck. It runs from the base of the skull down to the root of the neck. It is formed by a deep condensation of fascia. It is in fact one of the four layers of the deep cervical fascia found in the neck. The other three layers of deep cervical fascia include the investing layer, the pretracheal fascia, and the prevertebral fascia. The carotid sheath contains the common carotid arteries and its bifurcations into the internal and external carotid arteries. It also contains the internal jugular vein and the vagus nerve and the ansa cervicalis, or oh, and also cervical lymph nodes. Question four. The ureters are two long tubes that transmit urine made in the kidneys down towards the bladder where it is stored within the pelvis. The ureters can be considered to have an abdominal part and a pelvic part. The blood supply to the ureters is quite complex and subject to a great degree of variability amongst individuals. The abdominal part of the ureter receives its blood supply on its medial aspect, whereas the pelvic ureter receives its blood supply from its lateral aspect. The abdominal blood supply includes the renal arteries, the gonadal arteries, which are the testicular artery in males and the ovarian arteries in females. It also has direct branches from the aorta itself and the common iliac arteries. The pelvic ureters receive blood directly from the internal iliac arteries and its subsequent branches, which include the superior and inferior vesicle arteries. Question five. The bulbospongiosis is a paired muscle found just beneath the pelvic floor and is very different in males and females. In males, the bulbospongiosis is found in front of the anus and arises from the perineal body and the midline raphi over the corpus spongiosum. It runs anteriorly to a touch to the corpora cavernosa of the penis. It is continuous in its midline and it covers the bulb of the penis. It assists in emptying urine from the urethra and also aids in penile erection and contraction during ejaculation. In females, the two muscles are quite separate from each other and run anteriorly on either side of the vagina and attach to the corpora cavernosa of the clitoris. So how did you do this week? If you haven't already, please do watch my webinar on why anatomy is not difficult. It gives you loads of tips on why studying anatomy is not as hard as you think and you can find the link just below. Thank you for taking part and don't forget to stay funky. Your anatomy matters.